Yes, yes, I stopped the Mac from throttling and now it's super fast. Woo! So if you want to upgrade from Windows Home to Windows Pro or just get insanely cheap Windows and Office 2016 keys, head on down to 0 and 9, links are in the description and I even have a discount code for you and they also have cheap gaming keys too. Alright, tell you ho there champs. Now what you're looking at now is Prime 95. We have Prime 95 running. It's pegging the CPU at 100%. It's not the large FFTs in place. I did do that test and this does have AVX as well. But it just shows you this 2.6 gigahertz is the threshold for no more. It's the heat threshold. As you can see, it's 93 degrees at the moment, 99% usage. It is 100% peg CPU only with AVX. So doesn't get much harder than this you know as you can see I'm not playing any funny buggers here uh, you can see the fans are on auto I haven't changed them to custom or anything um, what do we ask we've got and they're not even flat stick they can go to 5.9 and 5.4 so you know they're you know 1000 rpm out from being like flat stick and as you can see here and I will leave a link in the description and thanks very much to Geraldo Jones for pointing this out to me. Big shout out to you, mate, for telling me about this app, this Volta app. And with this Volta app, you can undervolt and you can turn the boost off and you can power limit. And I'll tell you what that does. What that does is look at this. Okay, I'll just minimize this. Look at that. 11 minutes and 10 seconds. It is just below the Aero 15 now. Now, before, it was down here like it was what was it 14 minutes it was 14 minutes before so we shaved another three minutes off just by pegging the cpu to 2.6 it's base frequency and just keeping it there without boosting and what it shows you is this can now compete with the windows laptops so very impressed there like a few seconds slower and i'll be fair to the aero 15 here it does have the lower end i7 it has the 8750h and the macbook pro i have has the 8850h so it is a faster i7 and also that was single channel ram but still like you know it's a minute away and you've got to remember this has amd graphics so they're using cuda so yeah very close now isn't it and all that was achieved with it's just Turning off the turbo boost, as you can see here, I'm using Volta. I'll leave a link in the description. That's the Volta website. Uh, that's Prime 95. And this is Max Fan Control. I'm just using that. I don't really, really need to use that because um, I find that it regulates the fans pretty good. It doesn't turn them on quick enough, that's for sure. So, yes, if you turn them on flat stick at the start, you will get some um, gains in terms of being able to boost for longer at the start. But generally... It's 91 degrees here, even if I put the fans up flat stick. So I'll just chuck them up flat stick. It will make a little bit of difference in the temperature, but it's not going to lower the temperature by 5 degrees. So, you know, it just it's a few degrees here or there, so I don't even think it's worth the, you know, the extra decibels. See, 88, 95... Yeah, it's about three degrees from running flat stick. So as you can see there, it's just gone up to 90 degrees again, even though the fans are flat stick. So I just leave them on auto. Seems to be about the same temperature. And just shows you 2.6 is pretty much the limit. And I have tested it at 2.7. I just let it boost a little bit, which you can do here. You can uh, actually limit the power it gets. So you can click this, limit the power, and I limited it to 35 watts when it was rendering or whatever. And it let it boost a little bit, but not too much, because once you let it boost too much, it just goes schizophrenic up and down, and it's actually a lot slower. As you can see, I've gained how many more minutes? Um, just letting it sit at its base frequency, which it can do, so it doesn't actually throttle. So you can peg this CPU all you want. It won't throttle if you keep it at its base speeds. It will only throttle when you actually boost it. So let it boost, then it will throttle. And but I shaved at least three minutes off by just doing that, keeping it at a base frequency 
and I'll stop this now. I'll stop Prime 95 now. Right, so now I'm in Premiere Pro. I won't put the stopwatch on because I've already done the uh, times. And I'll just export it. I'll make sure this is um, no turbo boost on. See, that's the turbo boost. It's on auto uh, power limit. So, And there is an undervolt there. I'll show you the undervolt in a second. And this wasn't obtained with undervolt neither. This is 100% stock fans, 100% um, stock power, um, no undervolting. And it's still got those gains of whatever, three minutes, you know, very close to the Aero 15 now. So we'll export it. And we export it to the 4K preset. I'll just click that because it might be a bit. And when we turn off hardware encoding so that we are using all the CPU there. And now we'll export. And we'll just have a look at the meter here. Playing up. Sometimes this plays up this, uh, what's it called? The uh, power gadget plays up. Okay, we just started that again. Bring up Max Fans. Where's Max Fans? That's you, Max Fan. And we'll bring up the um, Volta so we can see what's happening here. Now, as you'll see, that base of 2.6 will stay there all the time. So what I'm talking about is the base 2.6. It'll sit here the whole render. And that's how I'm getting those gains, okay? Because it can sustain 2.6 no problem and i haven't touched the fans fans are on auto the power is on auto everything's on auto the only thing i've done is turned off boost and i'll show you what happens when i turn on boost now it's running at 98 degrees the fans haven't really kicked in now they just started to kick in here you can see the fans now i could turn these flat stick but i just showed you before it really doesn't matter flat stick or 80 percent it's doesn't really matter but as you can see the temperatures will start dropping now oh it's getting up to 100 the fans are coming on a bit more but it's still maintaining at 2.6 no problem it's sitting there it's not throttling the temperatures are higher than you'd like but um the fans are kicked in nice and hard now so those temperatures will start to drop slowly and it will maintain that 2.6 throughout the whole render and i do suggest if you are using premiere pro use opencl do not use um and you can see how much it dropped by the fans just kicking in there now they've kicked in really hard and it's dropped nearly 10 degrees and it will sustain about yeah low 90s okay even if you have the fans flat stick low 90s so that shows you that 2.6 is pretty much the limit if you went to 2.7 You'll be getting into the high 90s, and I'll show you that. I'll just show you, I'll just turn the turbo boost on. So the turbo boost is on now. Now watch it go nuts. I'll just apply that. So as you can see here, I've just applied the turbo boost. Now it just wants the boost, right? And watch those temperatures just spike. And then watch it throttle. And here we go. It's going to throttle any minute now. Maintain the boost for a little bit. And there you go, that's the end of it. It's just going to be going up and down, up and down. If you have a look here, it'll be going up and down, up and down the whole time. Let's see a bit more. Yep, that's it. That's the start of it, and that's just going to go up and down, up and down the whole way through the render. Now, I'll apply undervolt. So if you look up here in the top right hand, I'm applying the undervolt of minus 150 and it does do that how much does that reduce i tested it with the undervolt on the whole time made no difference like within the margin of error so the undervolt didn't really make a difference as soon as it wants to boost it's just going to overheat doesn't matter if you undervolted or not so i'll turn that turbo boost off and we'll get it back down to 2.6 again and then we'll just try and add a little bit of wattage by controlling the power limit. So it's gone back down to 2.6 now. As you can see here, it's flatlining at 2.6. Uh, forget about that. I don't know what's going on there. So let's turn the power limit on and let's go to 35 watts. So if I put in 35 watts, okay, I should be able to get a little bit more than 2.6. 
but not so much that it goes absolutely crazy. Let's see if it works. It was working before, but it... let's apply it. Oh, I have to turn turbo boost on, sorry. Turbo boost on, apply. Okay, so now it will spike up to, you know, up to three gigahertz. It's a little bit over, but it's not going below the baseline. And I'll find that 35 watts is the perfect. That was my fastest render at 35 watts. Every now and then it would throttle, but only ever so slightly. And I do have the undervolt here. If I minus the undervolt, it will probably throttle a little bit. I'll put the undervolt back on, off, sorry. So it's running at stock now, stock voltage. And as you can see, you're getting 2.9, but then it wants to back off. It's getting a bit too hot. A little bit of a spike there. But what we don't want it to do is drop below that baseline. As soon as you start dropping below that baseline, it really affects the time. Because when I put about over 35 watts, when I put 40 watts in, it started to get slower. So I think 35, 33 to 35 watts is perfect. You'll keep a little bit more than the baseline. So you get to boost up to 3 gigahertz every now and then, but it will start backing off but staying above the boost line. So if I just, for example now, if I put 40 watts into it, you'll see it will boost a little bit more, but then it will start going below the line because it gets too hot. So that's why I know the i9, it would not be able to sustain 2.9 gigahertz. There's no chance of that happening um, because I, I, I just can tell, I've already done all the tests. I was up all night actually doing the test, just working out the perfect amount of wattage there to put into it where I could get a bit of boost. There you go, boom, 40, once you went to 40 watts, that's it. So I hope this helped you out there. What we know is, if I'll just turn that power limit off, and well, all right, I'll just undervolt it too. So you might be thinking, oh, well, at 40 watts, if I undervolt it, will it um, be able to stay above the line? No, the answer is no. I'm not gonna prolong this video. I've already tested it. It's not gonna stay above that line. 35 watts is about the limit and even at under vaulted 35 watts is the limit it will throttle every now and then with 35 watts but most of the time you'll get your boost up to three gigahertz and it will start coming down a little bit but it'll stay above that baseline so the easiest way to do this is just um turn off the power limit you can leave the under you don't even need to leave the under volt you just turn the under volt off uh, turn off the power limit and just turn the boost clock off and you don't want to turn it off all the time because you want your single threaded stuff to be fast but just when you're rendering to get those best render speeds especially if you're not using hardware encoding or if you're using final cut it doesn't matter but i'm just talking specifically here if you're using like pegging the cpu this is where you want to turn off that um, boost clock and just keep it at that 2.6 and that is going to give you the best results if you're pegging those CPU all the cores. So if you're all core bursting, just put it at um, the turbo boost instead of going up and down crazy. It just works out being slower that way. If you just keep it at its base clock, no problems. And I will say it doesn't throttle now. You can say that this well, the i7, the i9 would throttle. If you tried to have the i9 at its base speed, it would throttle. But this i7, the 8850H, it does not throttle. So I'm very happy about that. And we got a Mac that doesn't throttle. Woohoo! All right. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Like, subscribe. I'll catch you soon. Tally ho.